Listen, you, you can literally stare and look at all the things that you can find in the beauty supply store because it's not just hair stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, right. it can be like little accessories or just something that catches your eye. You're just like, wow, you find like little whatnots in the right. beauty supply store. So, um, but in all reality, it's just like, um, hold on, what was the question? Like, just more about like, <laughs> <laughs> more, more about who, um, not like your target audience. She's nervous. Yeah, she's nervous. The different okay. type she of nervous. They know more that. She's a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> two guests here who normally are not and I'm gonna have them to introduce themselves but before we do that do know that this is March and this is Women Appreciation Month now the one thing I don't like about this month is the fact that why we should celebrate it within one month we should celebrate women across the world every day so anyway enough of that you already know I'm Timothy Raw what's your name Kalia Kalia I'm Misha Misha. Melly Mel. Melly Mel. And um, we will be talking about Miss Misha's uh, business. She's a black woman. Of course, you see that. <laughs> but she's a black woman who owns a business in America, right? And we want to highlight that, or rather, I want to highlight it. We all want to highlight it. Um, but anyway, before I actually start asking questions, how long have you been doing this? <laughs> okay, so um, I've been doing this. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've been doing this since um, August of 2019. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, that's when I started. All right, and how um, how did you fall into this business? What what inspired you? What was that fire that that lit up under you to get up in the morning and be like, hey, I want to open up a business. I want to do this. Um. Well, um, I was actually in this industry prior to actually becoming a, a black on a black business owner um but long story short i just it was my passion i've always liked everything hair jewelry anything to make you feel better or yes. make you look better enhance what's already beautiful um i just like things of that nature and so um already being in the industry having the passion for it it was like you know what i want a beauty supply store i worked in a beauty supply store for about five plus years so um I was just like, you know what? I want to do this every day. It's right. n it doesn't feel like work, right. so right. I right. want to do something that's fun. Oh, yeah. So um, right. that's what kind of sparked me to kind of like start to look into um, trying to open up one. Nice. Huh? Well, shoot, I understand. That yeah, it's good that you're doing something that you're passionate about. Right. And then that, you're that, work a day in your life. You facts. Because it's not work at that point. This is yeah. more than a hobby. Right? Now it, it's almost like a hobby. Um, that's when you realize, like. Um, you know, when you're punching in and you're clocking in for someone else, they they handle like the other side of things that you don't see in business. Right, right. You get to do your hours and do your shift, get a check every two weeks or, mm -hmm. you know, weekly, and then you go about your day. Right, right. But when you're actually the boss, it's a lot more. Basically, you pay the cost to be the boss. It's right. a lot more um, to the other side of business, but it still doesn't feel like um, work. It's right. like more so fun. So, yeah. Nice. All right. That's that great. makes sense. Well, what type of hair do you sell in your business? What's I, I'm, I'm, I'm oblivious, so I don't know anything about hair. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, mean, I got dreads. Shout out to my dreadheads. You know. Right. But. Okay. Um. So I sell. Um. The types of hair I sell is anywhere from um synthetic, blended to um human hair to reversion hair. It's like um different classes of different things, and of course um it's kind of like it could be graded. Um. You know like D being the worst, A being the best, but I don't typically go by the gray. Um, I just sell like a mixture of different types of hair because you have a different type of customer. Right, right, so of some customers still believe in the synthetic blended. They, they swear by it. Then you have those customers that want to spend a little bit more money and head towards the human virgin hair size. So right. I try to sell a little bit of all. Okay, okay. <laughs> what's, the name of, what's the name of your establishment? Here? Okay, so it's called All Dolled Up Beauty Supply. Yeah. And um, Oh, uh, do you want me to tell you about yeah, it? Yeah, what's okay. the name? And where, where are we located? Oh, this, we're this located. Address? We're located at 800 Shipyard Boulevard, Suite 12, and that's Wilmington, NC, 28412 for the GPS users. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we're we're in a plaza off Shipyard, um, in between a lot of little other stores, but. Um, I got the name. I wanted to have something catchy um, because I love my beauty supply stores around here. 
but you know you can never remember the name the, mainly the location so i wanted something kind of like you know catchy mm -hmm. when you think about beauty you think about getting all dot up and when you get all dot up you have to have a, a number of things to get all dot up with right. okay. so um that's where i got the name from too just i'm sorry i got a little ahead of you I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, hey, no that's how you do it that's so, how you, <laughs> you ain't get ahead at all um well shoot i need to um i do know one thing i'm looking at some of the stuff some of the products in front of me i have dreads and i need to utilize one of those products right. so so, <laughs> so where do you see yourself um I'm asking all the questions. You got any questions, sis? Right. So. The microphone check. <laughs> no, get to get closer to the bike. <laughs> <laughs> so I know earlier we were talking and you said like you broke into this business, having this building from working for them. When you switched over and transitioned to this being your business, what type of challenges did you face as a black business owner getting people to actually come here? Okay, so that is a great question. And it's a lot of different levels to that question. I'm gonna try to sum it up. So pretty much what I had to endure, it was like a bitter and sweet type of thing because um, being black already in America is one thing. Mm -hmm. And um, being a black woman and a black man, it's, it has its own levels and challenges right. too, but being a black woman in business is so hard. It's like, mm -hmm. you have to kind of like, Assert like, right. yeah, like yeah. you have to like make, like have tough skin for one. Right. You have to let them know I'm here and I'm here to stay. Mm -hmm. And then you have to, um, pretty much roll with the punches. I've got rejected a lot in this industry, but um, it was different. When I used to work in here, um, like I said, I, I we ended up purchasing the store from my old manager, well, the, the old owner, which was my old manager, the person that owned the store prior to me. Mm -hmm. And I saw how easy it kind of was for her, but like I said, I didn't see the back end. Mm -hmm. wow. And um, I deal with certain, um, certain accounts that do not want to sell to me or if they do sell to me my my prices are a lot different than other people's prices so you walk into here and you say hey it's not as you know full as this store or mm -hmm. it's not as much merchandise in this store as it is another store but i face a different challenge right. i can't just um call in and say hey i want to purchase this i have minimums to me so pretty much um with that it's just like just trying to I guess that's a like, like I said, an obstacle within itself. Mm -hmm. I guess like that's that's kind of like sums up the question. I think is that right. kind of yeah, no, that yeah. makes sense. That makes sense. I, I mean, that, that's another thing. Like you said, being in business is one thing, but when you're just a woman in general, especially a black woman, like and you're dealing with those people from different accounts, they may try to screw you on the price. Yeah. And they don't <laughs> think that you're smart enough to understand yeah. hey, what my profit is based on what I have to spend, yes. my budget, and things yes. of that nature. So like. Just really having that mindset that, like you said, tough skin. Yes. Not taking no bull. You know, black women don't take no bull from anybody. You know what I'm saying? No. So, you know, I think that's very uh, admirable that you just stuck to it and, like, you didn't let those things get to you because, you know, it's tough, you know. Yeah, and like I said, I still face challenges, but um, things have been working in my favor to where it's starting to, basically what I was kind of, you know, aiming for is starting to pay off right. pretty much. And so it's a slow process, but um, one thing about it is, is it makes it's kind of like history being made so you right. also have to like get into that part too right. like not look at the negative aspect is what i'm basically trying to say and look at what you're doing positive right. but that's what i kind of that's how i just kind of like go by things but i think the answer i think that was the question yeah, you answered answered. The question. yeah, you okay. the question. yeah, yeah. <laughs> how did you um well if you persevere through that she can persevere through anything right Ooh. but how, how did you uh stay afloat during the whole COVID situation that occurred okay so um hmm. that's that's a good question as well um well um, many people know first off i'm in business with my husband and he still works a i want to say it's a nine to five but it's not he works 10 hours just about every day and um he works really hard so basically where i where i didn't meet my goals he would kind of like step in and help me out with that um but i started trying to deliver Right, right. You know, I try to make smart. the pandemic work for me. Right. And it was just like, okay, no contact delivery, you know. Right. And that's when I um, went ahead and launched a website, um, a better website, um, prior, well, after the pandemic happened and we were on shutdown. So um, I just started to try to make it be a, like accommodate right. what I had going on. So I started idea. to do a little mm -hmm. bit of deliveries. And um, just when wherever I didn't meet at, 
My so resume helps. So you, you basically kind of change your business plan. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I can imagine a lot of businesses had to do that. that yes. Mm -hmm. And 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 quickly. Right. And right. like not something that I could like ponder on and think about for months. It was just like okay now or never never right, right. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. so i started to do that a little bit and then um i was even meeting um, my customers here at the store no contact but like right. just meeting them here setting up so that they can come and get what they purchased because mm -hmm. a lot of people didn't want to go through the website they will hit the um facebook page or my social media handles and just say hey locally right. i have this and i did a lot of shipping as well too okay. um i did a lot of shipping um before it went up <laughs> it didn't go up but um, yeah i did a lot of shipping uh, that was great that was that was a really good idea so i actually want to ask about how um you and your husband kind of worked this out together and um like how he supported you how you supported him and like just you know how it is when some people chase their dreams like you yes. know maybe their partner may not be as supportive of them and i think it's really important and especially you know black relationships that we have to support each other mm -hmm. more than try to bring each other down and say, oh, I don't think you should do that. It's not a good idea. So just touch base on how y'all relationship kind of like intertwined into the business as well. Well, first off, um, his name is Marcus. He could not be here. Well, he wanted to I be just here. I just saw him. to Marcus. Shout out Marcus. <laughs> his name is Marcus Clinton. And um, first of all, that's like my best friend. Mm -hmm. And um, we've been together for about nine years, but okay. uh, three years married, four, year, four years of being in July um, of this year. But it's just like more so like a friendship. Like he has me, I have him type mm -hmm. thing. And so when I told him what I wanted to do, he's always been very supportive of awesome. it. Um, but just like any human, we both have been like, oh, how is this going to happen? Right. Like, how is this going to take place? Where is this going to come from? But like, really, like I told you before, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in Jesus Christ. And so, you know, I know that he will make a way. Mm -hmm. And so um, things just started lining up. And when it came down to the store, Marcus just, it was like his instinct. He just hopped in, helped where he could help at. Um, and if he could not help, he stood off to the backside. Um, mm -hmm. You guys got to meet him a little bit. He's really not much of a talker, right. but he is like he's like that firm standing foundation mm -hmm. when it comes down to the story. Because like I said, if I have to change a light, I gotta hang up something. <laughs> I gotta move something. Right. That's my go-to person. He even mm -hmm. he um, even comes in here a lot and works too um, wow. if he has to. Um, but at the end of the day, he was very supportive, and it's just like one of those things where we kind of just knew like. It's gonna take a team yeah. to kind of do this, right, right. and it's gonna be days where, um, you know, we might be making a lot and we might not be making mm -hmm. anything. Do you got me? And do I have you? <laughs> right. And that's what kind of like relationship yeah. it has been. Yeah, and that's every, a beautiful thing. Yeah, and it and it's, it's still very testy mm -hmm. with it, um, because sometimes it's just like, dang, we got bills here, we got bills mm -hmm. home, we got overhead, you know, expenses so high, but it it works itself out, and we just always try to stick together. Shout out you to know. Mario. Shout yeah. out to Mario. Yeah. I might need you on the episode in the future. Yeah, yeah. That's real. You got to look out. Sure. You got to hold your woman down. Yes, you know, this one definitely, definitely. You got a question, sis? Okay, Um. so I know some people step out on faith and go, like, a lot of business owners. And you say you had another job when you were working here with them. Um. About how long did it take for you to, like, completely step out on faith and say, this is just what I'm going to do. I'm just going to focus on my business. Listen, I went, okay. So it's a it's a big time period because like I said, when I first started in the beauty supply industry, it was 2012. Mm -hmm. Okay. I worked two jobs um, in between working with them. When I finally got to the point where I bought the store, I was jobless for about two and a half years. Wow. I was sitting at home. I had just had another baby. It was like shortly after I got pregnant with her, um, I stopped working. And um, I had just had a baby, and it's just like I don't know what it is. Um, I don't know if you got you guys have kids. I think um, both of y'all, yeah, you yeah. have kids. No. Okay. Cameron, you got kids. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, it's just like this hunger that you mm -hmm. get yeah. after it's you. Motivation. Yeah, like after the kid or after it's something big that you just have done. It's just like you get hungry, and I'm not talking about for food. But I'm talking about like you got to do something. Got to do something. Yeah. And so um, I was just sitting at home. My husband was going to work every day. I was at home with the babies. Mm -hmm. And most people think, oh, you were at home with your kids and that's your husband work. was working. Oh, it's that's oh, that's wonderful. It's peachy. No. But not when you know <laughs> that you're supposed to be doing something out here. Mm -hmm. So I would sit at home plenty of days just just doing routine, just hoping and wishing that something would come my way. I would apply to jobs, wouldn't get the job. Mm -hmm. um, I would go to interviews. People would love me and I still would not get the job. Oh, right. And I'm just like, OK, things happen for a reason. Let me stop and just see what this is about. Wow. And so, um, you know, after that period, 
I got the store that was in 2019. Yeah, right. I was immediately employed the day that I signed up to buy the store. That was my next job. Mm. And it was like, okay. Um, it was like that period where I was just like, okay, I'm getting back to the swing of things. Let me get get used to getting up, right. you know, at this time and getting up. But that's what worked pretty happy. So I was like really jobless before that. And then um, for like a two-year, three-year period. And then I hopped back into doing this. So um, to answer, I think that answers that the answer question. That answers the question. That's tough. That's, that's a journey actually right a journey. Like, yeah. Wow. That's what people yeah, don't know. Gotta, uh, yeah, it's always, I mean, nobody know about the blood, sweat, and tears mm -mm. to anything. So... That had to be really tedious. Yes, because I was very, I was not, I'm not going to say I wasn't happy. I love being at home with my babies, but I just knew that it was something else out there for me, and I could not continue just to do this. Yeah. Do that, right, right, yeah. right. Shout out, to, shout out to all the mothers staying at home. That's a yeah. lot of work by itself, yeah, too. definitely. I have a whole different type of love for you because <laughs> you're doing a massive job, and you're not getting paid for it. It pays off. <laughs> it pays off. But you do not get a monthly or weekly yeah. check for that. <laughs> so, but no it pays days, off. No yeah. vacation. No sick days. If you're sick, baby sick, sick you, just, you better take care of the <laughs> you got to. So, I mean, it is a lot. And people have that, that type of standard where they think, like, you know, mothers that sit at home have it good. Oh, no. No. You have to be on schedule with those kids. Organization is the key. It's just not as easy as people think. And communication with your lover. Yes. I, I'm only saying that from experience. Shout out to my wife. Yeah, shout out to her. <laughs> that's, a, that's a work in itself. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's tedious. That really is. I feel like a lot of females... A lot of men think it's, oh, it's just my wife just staying home. She take care of mm -hmm. kids. No, when men get off work, you should be doing the same thing, too. Mm -hmm. And and that's one you know? thing about um, picking your mate. You got to make sure. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to, that's a whole nother segment. I know. <laughs> I'm not even going to go into the picking the mate part right, because right. everything is not perfect all the time. Mm -hmm. But you cannot look at a person's bad all the time. You got to kind of weigh it out. And it's just like with me and Marcus, it's just like he just came in. And he would not complain too much about, oh, the house isn't clean. Or, oh, the kids are not um, down to bed at this time. He just got in, help. Yeah. yeah. If I didn't feel like cooking, he did not say, the woman is supposed to cook. Yeah. It was just right. like, okay, right. well, here, you you wanted to cook this chicken? I'll season it and clean it. And how about you fry it? Right. Cool. See, I came with a compromise. Yeah. yeah. So, which yeah. is the <laughs> biggest thing compromise. Yeah. Down yeah. To. Yes. So, we didn't really have those um, titles where I had to do. Right. right. He right. kind of like, just, we did what worked with us. Basically, yeah, I think so. that's just something that America has put a label on. Uh, what they call it? Um, a stereotype. I mean, it's a form of stereotype. Uh, yeah, gender <laughs> the woman has to do. The woman yeah, should not like, have to always clean up. Sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I love cooking. I mean, if you don't right. play, I throw, I throw down in the kitchen. I mean, if you like to eat, cook. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. exactly. Huh. But I think that comes from the old times when the women stayed home and the men did that, and now that majority of the women want to be business owners. Yes. It's not like they breaking out so, everywhere. Yeah, sometimes I think, sometimes a, lot of, black women. Yeah. I think a lot of men get intimidated by women wanting to really be the forefront. Yeah, because they're like, oh, we're supposed to be the brand. That's a whole different, that's a whole different yeah. podcast. It episode. is, but that is a, it, but it ties into business. Well, listen, but if you think you about it, if you really do think about it, though, the, are men, there is men out there who actually have a problem with females being a power in a sense. Mm -hmm. Because that you, gender role you, is, I, yes. don't, I don't have to answer to this woman. Especially, you know look, at our, look at look at our, the leaders of America, politics. Right. They have a problem with a woman being in business. I mean, not in business, but like just being being, being the, the lead. Yeah. Right. And it's just like, in our reality, we can do a lot of stuff too. And right. if you if you groom us, not even groom us, if give you us give us an opportunity mm -hmm. to show, we could be an asset to you more than a liability. Oh, yeah. I mean, no, I agree. I mean, just look at the history of us having presidents. Yeah. Are there any female presidents? Mm -mm. No. <laughs> no. And I will say this. I honestly believe that a lot of people do not vote for Hillary because she's a woman. And they yeah. voted for Trump just because they didn't want a woman in office. My aunt loves I would. Uh, I actually <laughs> agree. I'm going to agree on that. Yeah, I, wanna, yeah, I agree on that. Actually, I want to touch base on the history, and then I want to get into, like, consumer things with you. I just feel like in America, like, Women always been the bottom of the totem pole. But mm -hmm. if you was black and a woman, like you was at the very, negative. very that, bottom. You just hit it on the nail. So, you know what I mean? So and I and I look at also history like within our community, we spend so much money investing into the same product but giving it to like someone else. Like the mm -hmm. majority of not being stereotypical, the majority of uh beauty shops are owned by Asians. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I feel like that was one of my earliest memories as a kid was going to my mom to the beauty supply because she was a cosmetologist, yeah, you know what I mean? So, like, and it was always, you know, the one right over here off, um, by where everybody's used to be. Uh, oh, the there. one that burnt down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we used to go there all the time, but I started thinking when we did uh, create this print house, like, how if we just channel our money into something else, like, mm -hmm. if these 
you can own your own business and like just it's reinvesting in us you know what yes, I mean? like, yes and you know the sky's the limit when you just think about stuff like that so tell me more about like your um the type of people that you serve as far as customer wise and you get a variety of people is it just i first off shout out to my customers because i love them i have <laughs> some that come every day mm -hmm. some that come every week um some that have never come but they come back just from off of the experience and they know that I don't have everything that they need, but mm -hmm. they still come in. So shout out to y'all for shout one. Out to <laughs> and um, <laughs> and um, pretty much, I don't really have. They call it like a target audience. Right. I don't really have a target audience. Um, you just have to have an interest in what they sell at the beauty supply store, because right. it's a number of things. Um, anywhere from jewelry, hair products, hair wigs, pieces. Instant extensions, weaving, you know, it's a lot of things that you can get out of a beauty supply store. And a lot of women, first off, I don't know if y'all ever been in the car waiting for a woman to come out of the beauty supply store. Oh, always went in. Listen, <laughs> I, go can, in. I mean, I got dressed. Sometimes I go in. Listen, you, know. you can literally stare and look at all the things that you can find in the beauty supply store because it's not just hair stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it can be like little accessories or just something that catches your eye. You're just like, wow, you find like little whatnots in the right. beauty supply store. So. Um, but in all reality, it's just like, um, hold on, what was the question? Like, just more about, like, <laughs> <laughs> more, more about, who, um, not like your target audience. She's nervous, yeah, she's nervous. The different type she's of nervous, they ain't nothing wrong with that, she's a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, <laughs> I don't have. Don't like, leave a comment. Leave a comment. <laughs> Definitely leave a lot of comments. Let me just be raw. I don't filter. You got a lot of black people that come here. Right. No, I know you're gonna say that, but I do. I get. I get. I, I'm very much so patronized by my African American people. I really right. am patronized by them. Um, but I, I really don't have like a target market. Like it could be anywhere from the age of twelve. A little twelve year old girl can come here and say, "Hey, these bows right here are so pretty." And Oh, I want my hair crocheted, and then boom, she's my customer. Right. Right. She's gonna bring her mom in here and say, "Hey, I want this," and mom's gonna buy it. Well, what, so, I'm, well, what I was getting on that is like you understand, like if it was like a little black girl, and she wants her hair a certain way. You understanding what different products do. Um, yes. Things like you know what I'm saying. You okay, have, so so you're asking more so like um like how you use your experience to help your customers is like. Oh what yeah. For okay, so buy. first of all, I'm gonna say I'm not licensed cosmetology, but experience is the best teacher. I've been in this industry a lot, so I can tell what kind of hair will match up, what right, it doesn't. Exactly. Um, I'm not. I'm not gonna just sell you something mm -hmm. because I want your money. That's just not how it goes. Um, I really love what I do, and if you and do it's not sad that buy, some places do that, and yeah. you know who you are. <laughs> yeah, and another thing is too, there is no pressure to buy. You can literally leave everything in here and walk out, and I will not feel bad for you. Not not for you, but like bad um that you left or mm -hmm. feel any type of way because. Things happen, but um, other than that, I try to make sure that you're getting the right product. Right. And um, sometimes I can take a little, anal um, I can analyze, you know, the hair a little right. bit right. and say, hey, this brand of hair is not going to match with yours. Right. Do you want to leave out? Okay. Or, you know, you might need a closure if you want all of the hair to be the same texture. Um, you know, this color, I've even went so far as to tell the customer, they'll ask me, do you think this color is nice yeah, on me? Yeah. No. <laughs> no, and not and not saying it in a mean way, but real, yeah, I'm not gonna sell it to you, to you <laughs> no. just because like, I'm about to make a sale. Right. It's just yeah. like no. I'm sorry, wait. No. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine? Like, I know there's some bougie people out there. No, yeah. like I can. can you ever had like a bad customer? Tell me, I can't really name it. The last bad in customer no. I really encountered, I was not the owner. I was right, more right. so of the worker, and I just let her deal with the person who owned it. Right, right. But right. now that the shoe was on the other foot. I try to make sure everybody leaves out of here with a smile or mm -hmm. if they right. even if I don't have what they're looking for, I try to like shoot them in a direction because right, right. I still know beauty supply. Yeah, I'll say, hey, this one, check this one, mm -hmm. check that one. I've, I've given recommendations to just about every beauty supply store or hair store in this city. So, I, I mean, you've done it. Yeah, you, you <laughs> have. I was wondering, did you come in here before? Okay, like, you may, I want to say it was like just before COVID hit hard yep. or you were like, had just opened towards the end of the year. Look and I was there. like, hey, do you have frontals? And he was like, no, try premium weft. And I was walking out and you were like, but I think they're close. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, I don't know. But I always try to um, name somebody else because like I said, I'm not, really in it for the money but if i'm going to be doing it of course i need it to pay my bills but right, right, it's right. more of my passion that drives me so i'm not going to be upset that you can't buy from me and then not tell you where you can get the stuff right, from. Right. you know that shows your yeah. character that's like respect. That's yeah like what where is your 
I respect Corey. people not beating around the bush and be direct 100%. Yeah. And they're not trying to be stingy, like, because yeah. the other business don't even know that you're sending customers their way. You yeah. know what I mean? But yeah. that, like I said, that ties into your passion. Like, it's not about the money. Like, you care about the individual. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I want you to I wanna make be sure dolled you're, up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I want to make sure that you're happy. If you're looking for a crochet, I don't have it. I will tell you the brand right. and the store who carries that brand. And it's just like, um, until I get where I can, you know, until I am where I am, where I, where, where, well, I be. want where I want to be. Yeah. What in the but, world? But <laughs> since you said that, where do you see yourself in your business? Three, five, seven, twelve years from now. Okay, so and that's, a, and that's big. <laughs> three, five, seven, twelve. What in the world? Big Which one? <laughs> five, well, we start off for five. the three years. Where Let me start off with the one year. <laughs> 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 because being being a black business owner is lit, but it's also it has its downside mm-hmm. and upside. And if you don't have the um, tough skin to deal with it, you'll quit. Right. You're quick. Right. Because like I um I touched base with you earlier, people focus more so on the long term part. Oh, the success. But they don't see the process, the blood, the sweat, the tears, right. the many that. losses you take and the mistakes that you have to learn on your own because people don't want to help you. Don't they know. don't want to tell you, Oh, I've been in business for this amount of year and this was wrong. They'll right. sit right. there and watch you make mm-hmm. the mistake and then don't help. And then don't help. Yeah, so I I've learned a lot I've from trial that. and error. But my long term goal is to really be in more than one city. See, that's okay. Okay. that's my long term. Yes, um, yes. I want to be in just about not just even in North Carolina. I want about three or four stores in this state alone. But I also want to branch out to um, like Georgia and Virginia, Tennessee, okay. like different places. So you like potentially franchise in a sense. Franchise, and that's the mm-hmm. word. Right, all right. <laughs> I want to be known. I want to be known like some other popular places. I'm right. not going to say the name, but that you. But can, you know who you are. Yeah, you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to be, um, you know, known to as a black line of mm-hmm. like a brand the brand right, right. all dolled up is the brand and i want to be known for that and um i want to hire people who can help i call it being culturally diverse mm-hmm. where you are you know educated on multiple cultures not oh, just yeah. one yeah. Not just you one. know and just and just because i'm black owned doesn't mean that i'm only focusing on the customer right. that's black right. i have a lot of hispanics that shop with me shout out to my hispanics yeah uh, like you know <laughs> and, 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 and so it's like you know you don't want to just stick with um one person but you know you just want you want to hire employees. so much more business yeah that's so how much. you do you know, business and we all can get along yeah. i don't want to separate because there's certain stores that separate mm-hmm. where they have their stuff for their people and hold on y'all so my my sis needs to dip up out oh it was so funny <laughs> it was definitely like she was scared she passed through the mic i'm all nervous <laughs> girl you got she got to go to work don't work too hard. I do appreciate you being on a Have a good day. <laughs> Have a good day. <laughs> nice, nice meeting you. Maybe Hopefully it's not the like last. follow up. You do do the follow up. Of course. I got to check up. I got to check up on you. Miss Misha. Oh, oh, I got you. I got you. Okay. Um, Hold that thought, Chief. I got to. Uh, you can edit this. Hold this. Hold that thought. Or y'all keep talking. It doesn't matter. This okay. is Greatest Cafe. This is Great Apes Cafe. We right back here with Miss Misha talking about her business. And we already talked about what? Short term goals? What's your long long term goals? I think we talked about long term. Oh, it was long term. Okay, so we wanted to we, we wanna talk about just short term. What what strategic plans are you gonna do uh to push your, yourself in a better position? Um short term goals are first off, continuing to stay open. <laughs> right, right, of course. <laughs> um and organization. Um, nobody wants to talk about that, but that's tedious. Yeah, it's kind of like that conversation you used to have with your mom when she's like, <laughs> "Clean up your room, put this here, everything right, has right. a home." Oh yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I'm in that phase where I'm trying to um basically get better at that when it comes to um business and um just like the physical like inside of the store, just trying to get it more organized and um have it to where it's easy for people just to come in right. and grab what they need. need right. Um, yeah, but that's one of my short term goals okay. is to organize better. And um, an employee. Oh, right, oh, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's really a short-term goal because um, everybody always says, oh, you're in business, you can work for yourself, you are the boss. No. If you're in here working, you're still working. You're yeah. still working. You're just working for it's yourself. yourself. Yeah. Right, but right. you're still working, meaning like everything is on you. You're obligated at that point. So I would love an employee that could come in and help me Come, come help take some of the load off mm-hmm. so that I can kind of get the back end done yeah, and still and still get the back end done and have the, the store fully operational so right. that's another one um, short term goals and then 
to fully get it stopped 100%. Mm-hmm. Where is wow. no you white space see, yeah, in you here. You have to send someone <laughs> somewhere else. You yeah, yeah, right, I can have everything right. that they need, um, or the priority of what they need. That's what mm-hmm. kind of that's what I do when I kind of order. I order the priority, but um, I want to be able to say, hey, I do have that, and right, you know, right. you don't have to go other places because they tell me a lot of times that they don't want to go, mm-hmm. right. but oh, they yeah. have to go. They have to go. And so um, I don't mind them having to go, and if they still go afterwards, but long as you know that I did try my hardest to get what you needed in here. Right. Um, so you can problem. come and yeah. feel free and shop in a peaceful environment where you can just shop in peace and have questions and, you know, uh, look up your list in yeah. peace and you, know, I, you don't have to right. look over your neck to right. see if, you know, somebody's watching you watching, or, yeah. <laughs> or that case. So yeah. um, I try to make it very friendly and I'm really big on family. So don't be afraid to bring your kids in here. As long as they don't break anything. <laughs> but, I mean, it's okay. Kids can come. I have babies. I know what babies do. It's okay. So, oh, yeah. it's just more so like a family-oriented vibe that I want you to get when you come in here. Like, you think I'm your long-lost cousin right, or somebody. Right. <laughs> awesome. Now, yeah, so based uh, touching on customer relations, like, you said you have a lot of Hispanics that shot with you. Mm-hmm. And you said uh, for your long-term goal when you start expanding, which you will, uh, and you wanted cultural diversity. Yes. So, touch on a little bit more about how you want your shop to... Uh, to kind of be that shining light of that. Okay, so I don't want to only just market to African Americans. Even right. though we are the number one consumer, we make a lot of these people rich. Mm-hmm. Um, but nevertheless, um, I want it to be a place where everybody can come and not have to worry about, oh, she only targets this type of race. Or, right. you know, she only has combs or brushes for this type right, right. and colors. I want it to be a little bit of all of it so that when you all come, you just get that happy vibe feeling and I yep. have what it is that you need mm-hmm. and um, when it comes down to Hispanics Hispanics are around and they're getting here more and more yeah. every day Especially every day this, this area yeah. location where you shout out to my Latinos yes I love me some mm-hmm. Hispanics because they are some of them are hard workers really yes. they really are Carl- oh yeah people. Carlos you know who you are my homeboy Carlos um, Santiago Fade <laughs> hard worker you know who you are shout like out to Santiago. my Latinos <laughs> 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 it sounds important yeah. uh, <laughs> um, Angel but, you know who you are hey yeah, I ha- and I had a few. Um, one of them, her name was Lindsay, not Lindsay, uh, um, Sarah, over here at the booth store. Okay. Um, Brandy, she's she's um, kind of like mixed with it both. But I really do appreciate their hard work. Mm-hmm. And um, they're people just like we are too. So right. I would love to expand in here to where they come in because they are shoppers. They right. like a lot of stuff too mm-hmm. that are in the beauty supply stores. Um, the only thing is a lot of them can't speak English. So oh, yeah. um, that next phase is like, how are you going to keep them in here? I want to hire someone who can speak both. It's a job and opportunity <laughs> right there. I want you to be bilingual. Huh. Um, and, um, you know, to be able to help the customer. It's yeah, all about the customer. Right. So um, just trying to make sure I just have a lot of products for them. They like a lot of um, different things. And so I want to be I want to be that spot where you can come in and say, hey, I know when I come over here to Misha's. One-stop shop. You know, the one-stop shop, yep. I'm going to be able to get a little bit of everything in here right, and um, right. feel comfortable while doing it. Right. I don't want anybody to feel like right. they they don't belong. I can't shop here, right? Yeah. You want to have I'm going to tell you, like, uh, economically, that's going to work for you. Like, <laughs> Crazy because inclusion is can, very important anyway. Yeah, like when you can uh, adapt to many different cultures and backgrounds, like it's just gonna bring more people in, and that's more money and more. Money. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fact. fact. He's so silly. I can't do nothing but laugh at him. <laughs> so since we're talking about products and stuff, hold on, I, hold on. So what's, which one of these is good for my dreads? Okay, is? so my husband is a firm believer of um, Talia Waked products. Huh. Waked, I think that's how Waked. you say it. Mm-hmm. She is a black owned um, owner of this brand here. And I also try to promote black owned products for our black owned hair. I really do. Um, it's a lot of things that we do not need in our hair. Mm-hmm. Facts. And a lot of queens are recognizing that. And so they're putting Don't back use those beeswax. Part- Don't do that. <laughs> you know who you are with the dreads kicked <laughs> up and the white picked up mayonnaise you know exactly who you are I'm so sorry don't do that get you a, a vegetable cleans you out here looking the dress looks so dirty I want to cut off oh my face. goodness <laughs> but yeah continue you know who you are you know exactly oh, we're supposed to be laughing this much <laughs> But yeah, you gotta take care of your dress, y'all. You do, and this is a good line. I mean, it's not it's not only for dress. She has a natural hair care product, but right. any natural hair care um product is good for dress as well. Um, but you you want 
things that are sulfate free that doesn't have the parabens and the um, alcohol mm -hmm. and like yeah. all those bad ingredients that oh, yeah. they use to kind of make the product last longer pretty right. much and um, keep its consistent uh, consistency um, but you know um, this is a good product are for, they local or are they they're not local okay but she's black owned I'm trying to get more local black owned products in here too they just have to um, fit a certain type of standard um, okay. to be um Put in the store. Yeah, I got you know you. you can't just put mess. Yeah, just put yeah, yeah, I can't yeah, just no, put anybody. I can't just put anything. You can't put no mess. <laughs> yeah, because you're liable for this product. So right. if something happens, you got to be ready for the repercussion that comes with it. So it has to be up to par. Right. It has to be something that and your name on the yeah, line too. Like, yeah. oh, I got this. Yeah, nice but I really do. Um, I really do like supporting my black people. So these. Um, this is Talia Wakid. She's a black owned product. Mm -hmm. If you're ever going to your local beauty spot store and you want to support one, um, Miel's Organics. They are a black owned um product, and this one right here is a um a black a locally owned black product. He is from Greenville, North Carolina. Okay, all um, right. He has a brand called Man Centrals, and it is um someone dear to me. They have like a beard uh butter and oil uh, to kind of like okay. groom the beard, and it's natural. Right, it right. doesn't have Shout all out to that my stuff. beard head. Shout out yeah. to my beard. <laughs> and um, um <laughs> Man Centrals. I can't grow one. <laughs> You might be able to do it oh, after you do the oil. You know what I mean? <laughs> and the, I wish y'all could see the cameraman's beard because he got he got that, that beard. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so he got that kind of beard that looks like if he just cut it off, it's gonna be back again next oh, week. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah. Nevertheless, I try to um, make sure I support more majority of black owned products. But there's also some other products out there that are still good for your hair mm -hmm. that are not black owned. But we've been looking at the ingredients and stuff. Oh yeah. And we've oh, been yeah. trying to get it together when it comes down to these products so um yeah i try to sell a lot of black owned well i'm definitely i'm definitely going to get some of these products today so, so oh. tell me about this shirt i think you said the shirt and the mask um, what's on that shirt what? yes i'm going to tell you about that a lot of customers ask me if it's for sale it's not Okay. <laughs> Killing me, small. Right, Killing me. I know. Um, my mother. Um, like I said. Um, I don't know if we. What's your name on it? Um, it, it has my logo. All okay. Dollar Beauty Supply. And um, it's a shirt and a mask, right? Okay, okay. You know, since the pandemic, we've had to like basically change everything. Everybody comes out of the right. house with a mask on. Right, right. And so my mother got it for me as a remembrance, kind of of like what I had to go through last year. Right. It was just, and it worked here. It, I actually did cry when she gave it to me. Um, but it was more so of a reminder because you want to give up. I'm telling you, people see the one side of business and they think success. It is not always success. Right, right. You can make a thousand dollars in one day, the next day make zero dollars. Right. And either way, you still have to come in here with a smile on your face and remember that it's your passion and remember that it's something that um, you're good at doing right. and go off of that without the income some days. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so it was like a reminder for me not that, to give up. Yeah, not to give up. Like I and that's had easy, plenty. Though. Yo, that's yeah. easy to give up. That's the easy route. <laughs> so my, especially if you got a customer that come in here, got a whole attitude. They throw you after the game to walk out that door. They're gonna be like, smiling by the time they leave though. That's what's up. See, okay. that's the good. That's yeah, the good I don't. I don't right want there. no mess in here. I don't. I don't allow that. That's one of my rules. <laughs> I do not allow any mess in here. I won't deal with it. I will. I will hit you with the sign that says, "I have the right to refuse service." Yes. So at some point, all dolled up, we might have to hit up Creator Sprint House for some t-shirts. I mess. need to. This is the Creator Sprint House. Thing. Listen, just we just, no, but me, me and my husband just talked about it. And he always comes in and he says, um, oh, we need to go over there. It's the timing. Timing is always off. Yeah. But it's probably, I've been I, here so much. I'll give you Mr. Chris or Mr. Bobby. Shout out to Creative Sprint House. I'll give you the, num the number. Yeah. I'll make some time. Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. I'll make some time. <laughs> I, I look, I'm with it. Because <laughs> um, I want a shirt. I'll rock that. I mean, probably not. A lot, family, of but. a lot of customers <laughs> say that, though. They ask me all the time, um, you know, did you get this? And I'm like, my mom's friend made this for right, her. Right, that's fine. And, gave, and she gave it to me. But a lot of customers want to wear the logo. I didn't think they did. Oh, yeah. You never know. Cause it's I different. mean, the way you treat them, I want to wear it, too. No, you so <laughs> sweet. He's so sweet. He's so sweet. <laughs> Yeah, but I try. I mean, they always ask me, is it for sale? How much is it? And I'm like, it's not for sale. Not for sale, right. But I, I can look into that because they are a great um, business, cre creators for now. I see so much. A lot of my family members have went to them. They don't even know. But uh, the quality of the shirts are amazing. Uh, quality, so, I mean, it's pretty, it's, I can't complain. I, yeah, and, I and complain. you wash it and it looks yeah, the same. same. Right, right. I can't complain. Oh my God, I did uh, not know that. <laughs> I can see all dolled up. Yeah, I, I can I rock a shirt. 
I got you. I might need to link that up. Get that thing in the making. Do you do anything else like social media wise or any other type of platform that you promote your business or your these type of products? I do. I need to get better at it. <laughs> Not even get better at it. The thing is, she forgot the name. That's what it is. What's the name of it? No. <laughs> what so, is we have social media handles on... T- we have Twitter, we have Instagram, we have Facebook. I um, Twitter is just not... I don't use Twitter. I can't I get, get with it. I don't get Twitter it, yeah. is a, Twitter's a I'm different a world. Guy. Yeah. Shout out to my tweet, tweet heads. Tweet yeah. Heads definitely. It, college days? Yes. Yeah. Now? Um, now, it's just like, what am I tweet about? I got a new merchandise and uh, <laughs> um, I got... I had, I had seven customers today so far. I don't know what tweet to tweet. It. Right. Tweet it. Just talk about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, how, that's how they normally do it. Right. But um, we have Instagram and um, and Facebook. Our Facebook handle is um, All Dolled Up Beauty Supply. Mm-hmm. And you'll see the um, logo in um, pink and black as the profile picture. And then, of course, when you get to scrolling, you'll realize that it's our page because um, we have beauty supply products on it. And then our Instagram handle is all dot up underscore beauty supply. And um, it's the same logo as it is on Facebook. It's a pink logo in cursive that says all dot up beauty supply. And um, you'll see some of the same content almost, but it's it's mainly beauty supply things that you can see on the uh, Instagram page. So uh-huh. you're more than welcome to check us out. <laughs> all right. Well, I know one thing. This is what I'm going to do for you, sis. <laughs> I'm gonna end up putting your um your business on my podcast as far as free advertisement. Um, I do that for you. So, I mean, yeah, I do that for you. For That's free. a privilege. I like that. <laughs> That's and, um, an honor. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, uh, this won't be our last episode. I'm gonna be coming up in here checking up on you. Yes, I appreciate um, that. Oh yeah, I'll make sure you be on some other episodes. Um. And I'm gonna need to come in here anyway to buy a product for my dreads, so you can right. save me a little bit more. You gotta tell them what you trust your hair with. Kenta oil. What's the name of the other oil? I just castor. No. Castor. Yeah. It's castor. I, I mix it Kenta with castor. You know, oil. castor oil has been a old, like it's one of those fake. old faithful oils. That's the oh works. Yeah. So th- I mean, you gotta be. I have a whole gallon of castor oil. Do you know that some women literally um to get to go in labor early, they drink that. They drink the what? castor. Yeah, it has a lot of a lot of benefits. Or you can drink it. It does. It has a lot of anti-inflammatory uh, benefits as well. Oh, so I didn't know that part. See, you just taught me something else. Granted, I, the castor oil. I mean, it's so thick. I couldn't. Oh, I couldn't imagine them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like, you must be ready to have that baby right now. Uh, <laughs> that's what I swear. Like I'm thinking, it tastes like mineral oil or something. Like, right. You trying to be going to blue blue? You know what I mean? <laughs> I wouldn't be wanting to drink no castor oil. No. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. I mean, you can. It's, it's, it's yeah, but they said, like you said, they didn't want that baby out, <laughs> out, out of there. <laughs> Shout out to all my females giving birth. That is a whole yes. different world. Mommies. It's mommies in the making. Out. Moms yeah. that are already moms. So how did you find a balance, speaking of moms, being a wife, a mother, and a business owner? How, yeah, do you how go did you find that? That's, balance a, that's that a good out. question. How do you balance it all? Because I know some days... You come up in this piece and I'm like, what the world is going on? Let me tell you something. Are you in the matrix? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Jesus. Huh. I do not know how I make it throughout the day. And someday, one, one thing for sure, um, that's why I had to silence my phone. I have alarms that go off almost every hour. And if I'm a tad bit late, the rest of my day mm-hmm. is like kind of like backed up. So um, organization mm-hmm. is really the key right. um, to being a mom. That's one of the keys. Um, but trying to balance it, ooh, I don't have time for anything else that's yeah. not business and family. Yeah, right. like, yeah, like so, yeah. yeah, my priorities. You gotta take care of your priorities. Yes, and so they're at the top of the list, and so it's just like some days I'm I'm on top of that list, and some days I'm a little lagging, but um. I don't know. I just manage it. I get through it and I start over again the next day. Mm-hmm. And like I said, experience has always been my best teacher. So I, I learn a lot in trial and error. And so with the business, you do have to be organized and um, just set alarms and make sure you meet your goals mm-hmm. and make sure you um, stay on top of things. Like you have to be a week, oh, excuse me, a week early right. on top of things right. um, versus like don't day by day. Yeah. You don't have time yeah. for Yeah, you don't. You don't. Because that can easily happen. No. So. And then a lot of people don't know either. Um, sometimes my babies are up here with me. Mm-hmm. Especially huh. on the weekends. Uh-huh. Ain't no wrong with and that. Yeah, That's all right. Child care is expensive. Shop. <laughs> hey, we used to be, up, we used to be in, yeah. uh, what was it, Linda's Hair? Linda's Hair Design? Down, uh, I think it's uh, over by Hanover. 
I think I know what you're talking yeah, about. Well, it used to be a turn. No, it Laura, used to be turning heads. Oh wait, not turn heads. That was okay. Yeah, that, my mom used to work there, and uh, she used to take us up in there sometimes. Be there for mm -hmm. five to eight hours. Like I want to go. Oh, oh I remember I'm those hungry. days. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. My mom had, she had, had to do. She had to do. And oh, they didn't have YouTube and the phone like they do for nah, these kids no, now. No, Lord no. I we made it through them shows. Watch they didn't have Netflix. Show. You had to watch the commercials. Mm. On Netflix, Watch you can just... the Courtney Murray show, Jerry yeah. Springer show, no. Judge Joe Brown. Judge Joe Brown. <laughs> Don't forget Judy now. Ricky you... Lake. <laughs> oh, I remember Ricky Lake. I'm dishing it. I got to find it. Look, when I'm looking for somebody right that I haven't seen in a long time, I go to Instagram and see if I can find them. Because um, when the Parkers finally air back, I went oh, and followed yeah. everybody. Oh, not the Parkers. Yeah. I went and followed Professor Ogilvy. I followed everybody oh. on Instagram. That's like, hey, hey, I go on. I do remember the Ricky Lake show, and I do remember sitting at the African Heritage place and them working on my mom here for like seven hours. Mm. And I said, This ain't it. I was probably what 13, 14, uh -huh. and I still had to sit there. That's terrible. But now they got, like you said, Netflix, Netflix. YouTube. Mm -hmm. All the stuff. Way to be I mean, the the church, just the church. In the matrix. The children know how to just. But she said it right the first time. The church. The church. <laughs> the the they churn. know how to. They know how to pick up the remote and just slide to the mm -hmm. next episode oh, or whatever. Like, how you do this? Up? My daughter be Facetiming me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put that little thing up there. I don't even know how to. And uh, then something with the kids. I do not know why my kids and they don't get to watch YouTube much. But when I, we're up here, I have to kind of do what works. They watch other kids play with toys on YouTube. Oh, that's have, interesting. Have you experienced that yet? I have seen. Well, my daughter used to watch these girls like they used to make these short films, and she was obsessed with mermaids. And it was these three little suburban white girls, and they would just be like having like these different episodes. I guess it was like a TV show about how like each one of them would transform into a mermaid. Oh gosh! And like <laughs> she would watch that for hours and hours. I'm like, what are you watching? She'd be sitting there looking at them like Linda's gonna turn into a mermaid. Yes, they know. <laughs> Cause know they don't like, watch the episode fifty thousand times. Oh god. <laughs> Whatever they know. Matter, go ahead. My my daughters do that. They they watch other kids play, and I have two daughters that are living in two different worlds. My baby girl, she's obsessed with like dinosaurs, science, <laughs> animals. She's even into this thing now where she watches these guys build pools and build um houses out of like mud. mud and yeah, yeah, I've seen everybody gonna watch that. Video. Everybody can watch it. She just be like this. That's it's fire. It's fire. It's fire. But, it's fire. but then she goes and she tries to imitate it. So it's like she <laughs> yes. Oh no, she she wants to. She keep for her birthday's coming up. She's like, Don't I'm gonna like, pool in the backyard. <laughs> she like, I want a pool. And then she start digging in the backyard like. You know, putting stuff together, but she's obsessed with that. And then my daughter, she's obsessed with dresses, Frozen. Mm -hmm. um, my oldest, she's obsessed with, like, the girly stuff. So these kids watch other kids do things on YouTube. When we were little, you just went outside and somebody it, introduced you. To how, oh, you know how to play hide and go seek? No. Think, huh? How do you play? Mm -hmm. yeah, and then and you that's play. about it, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like... You know, and before we had cell phones and texts, where everybody at? You just went up to the house that had all the bikes out front. And you like, all right, all my friends are... <laughs> All my friends is over here. I know. Yeah, you know, spot. you see the bikes right uh -huh. here. Uh -huh. And yeah. the cans in the bike. You remember that? Oh, yeah. not the cans in the bike. Or the car. Dang, I forgot yeah. about that. The make it that's sound a, like a motorcycle. Yeah, the motorcycle. Yeah, so we used yeah. to do that all the that time with the cans in the bike. Oh, my God. Children don't know how they got it. <laughs> they no. don't know how they got it now. They no, I bet you if I show my kids that right now, they're going to finally like it. But if they don't see it on YouTube, they ain't going to want to do it. <laughs> no. Something about that. But they're gonna see this episode. That go mommy. <laughs> I, I can't wait to show them hi, Maya. Hi, Leia. I love you. <laughs> but that's another thing too. I have babies looking up to me too. Mm -hmm. That's another part of the like when she asks me like um like how did I get to this? It's like you have to do something, mm -hmm. you know. Right, and right. then when you have two little girls looking up to you, it's different. Kids are okay. Kids in a whole, you should want to do better. Mm -hmm. But like when you have like a certain gender, like a certain like if I had a, a son, right. I would want to show him that I could be strong right, or right. you know um, be the provider or you know some some sort of like that. Or he would take after his dad. Right, right, right. But when you got little girls, it's like you have to show them how to be. Right. You know, I feel like you got to be more and not to sound or be. I guess a form of being sexist, but yeah. you have to be kind of defensive. In yeah, sense. like you, you have, have to show them the because the world before this, yeah. like we got. You know who you are, uh, but, uh, <laughs> but like, like the time before this, the time before this, right? They had it to where the world was look, like women was just looked at like a like a trophy yeah. or like oh, yeah. a pawn. Misogynistic. Yeah, like yeah, very, oh very. well, my wife can 
accompany with this, accompany me with this. It's just like you're raising daughters in this time. You got to teach them that they can be the same as the little boy they're playing with. Right, exactly. And so it's just like you can't be weak in front of them. You have to show them like I'm going to get it together no matter what. No matter what. Like um, I'm going to do this. I can't like uh, like a good metaphor. Well, not really a metaphor, but like um, an example. We went to go visit my sister. And she cooked us a gourmet breakfast. I'm talking about pancakes. I thought I was at home. Pancakes, <laughs> eggs, bacon. Good right now. Um, she had steak on the side. Oh, um, steak and eggs. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> she had all they that. They changed the whole situation. Her husband didn't make the steak. Shout out to him. <laughs> but no, <laughs> they were good. I'm sorry. Oh, that sounds so good. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's the same guy who made I'm the essentials. He made the steaks, but. Regardless, it's like she, my my niece is one, and she but, loves her mom. Wait a minute, that steak had a little bit of fat on it. A little bit, around the back. <laughs> no, he, this was the <laughs> Y'all hungry? You hungry? Uh, <laughs> I, I think I'm with y'all too. Uh, and and that was on the grill. New York style, hey. And he did that. Have, he oh, did that. Shout out, man. Right a little bit of fat. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to. Like, you have, uh, killing me I'm right not the whole glob. Uh, we just had that little, little bit of perfect, perfect balance. Y'all are you get so that bite. hilarious. <laughs> oh, you got a little bit of onions on it. Up the grill. Oh, no, you got to have the grilled onions. I don't even play with oh. like that. I don't even want that steak. You I don't got a little bit of onions on it. But, mm -hmm. but um, she did it all with my niece on her hip the whole time. And it's just like the perfect example. Like, if you could paint something or you, when you visualize a black woman nowadays, like being that we are coming into businesses mm -hmm. and we're we're being the forefront. It's just like um, that's the image. Oh yeah. Regardless, oh, yeah. we can have one pulling at our leg, one on our arm, right. and still oh, got to get the job done. I want to say this before we wrap up. Even though I, it's my first time meeting you, I'm very proud of you. What oh, you doing? Oh, thank you. I'm I very proud. It. <laughs> being able to balance, you know, a husband, the kids, a business. And like just trying to be an example for your girls, you know what I mean? I think it's very important, especially in the black homes. Like sometimes, sometimes our parents are not always super supportive, or like yeah. maybe not always. And you have friends, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I think you know, let your girls Family. be in the science if they want to be in the science. Yeah, like, you know, yeah. You know, dinosaurs and stuff. Don't shut it down and yes. tell them, oh, that yes. ain't real life. Like let them live and mm -hmm. like you know, just be that Let's example be of that mom, right? And uh. I just want to say I'm proud of you, girl. I you know, like, oh, hey, that's so sweet. Y'all see how, hey, our flag woman is coming, man. We don't know why, man. I don't sleep. I appreciate that. I don't know, know where everybody else years. on this planet came from. I come from a woman. Yes. Mm -hmm. I come from a woman. Specifically me, of course, I come from a black woman. Yes. And I love seeing that you being strong mm -hmm. on your feet and knowing that, you know, an idol mind is a devil workshop. And she's Ooh. not being idol. Is very very Ooh, you know, nah. dope to me. So. Look at that! Look at that! <laughs> <laughs> I got chills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's real. So but no, that's real. Again, like I said, I'm gonna be visiting. I live right around the corner from your shop. Yes, so there's no much. excuse. Like today, before we wrap, I'm buying. I'm buying some product. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my dreadheads. I just washed my hair today. I had a little vinegar wash. So yes, detoxing. Um, detoxing is important. Me. Definitely important. Don't do that. And for all y'all dreadheads out there, put again, putting that cake up stuff in your dress. Stop it. That beeswax ain't it. That petroleum it's oil. There's other things that you can do for our... It's, I mean, I can that in my gas tank. Stop. Exactly. <laughs> That's, That's what they it's put the same in. ingredients. Same, same, same. <laughs> True. I, and I want to curse. I'm gas. I'm not Chief, let me tell you something. Get, I saw this one person the other day. I know, Aaron. Give me like two more minutes. <laughs> I saw this person the other day, and I was I was driving the 18 wheeler, and I went to this gas station, and it was just like, it's like somebody turned him upside down and just put his hair in a, a mop full of like, how should I put it? Like every 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 fiber in your bed just mm. sticking in his in his hair. And it's like, I see a lint, white piece of lint, red mm. piece of lint, <laughs> green piece of lint. What the hell is that again? What? <laughs> that ain't it. Wash your hair, detox your hair. Yes. YouTube detox. it. Get the vinegar. Get it out. Oh, Why honey, she... I should have got a degree from YouTube. I should have uh, <laughs> ain't thinking about some degrees around here. I done yeah. learned a lot of stuff over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I done changed your whole water pump on the Jeep before from YouTube. Okay. Huh? Husband vibes. That's my husband right there. <laughs> husband vibes. Because he will do it. Oh. He will like, you know what? You don't want to teach me? I'm going to no, teach I'm myself. I'm going to teach myself. That's how I be. Mean. So, yeah. So, so. Well, like we said, this is Great Apes Cafe. We are here at All Dolled Up there we Beauty go. Supply. <laughs> With Miss Misha. Miss Misha, oh. please come down here and support your local black and what's business. the address one time for here what's the address um 800 shipyard boulevard suite 12 wilmington nc 
2812 for the GPS users. Huh. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get some problems. Down to get dolled up. That's all I'm gonna tell you. Huh. Aaron got my DJ, my producer, he got dreads down his down his back. I mean almost. I really feet. wish I could see them. <laughs> he Homeboy said, what, mean, 10 he gonna need some products. Ten years. He gonna need some products. Keep them things healthy. He gonna need huh, he gonna need some products in here. So he he got for every bottle it's probably what three dreads per bottle. I don't know. But <laughs> he, he doing something right. Oh, they down his down back. Back. Right, right. <laughs> and one more thing I want to say really quickly. I really do this too for not only for my children but for other little girls who don't think that it can be nothing. Right. Because I used to grow up looking at other people like, oh, that can't be. Nah, right, that's not. Right, right. But it can't really judge, can be done. Can't can't judge, example, yeah, man, it's a, it, they brainwash you into thinking yeah. that it cannot be and it's hard to obtain. Obtaining is easy. Staying in it is the hard part. Mm -hmm. But you can do it and you can push through and that's who I do it for. That's what I wanted to say. Hey. You can apply that to so many things too. Hey. I like that. Obtain it. Oh, yeah. I like what you just said. Yeah, but getting in it, whoo. Gotta stay I'll in it. it. Easy, but getting it—it's like a car. Just keeping you it. Get the car. Can you maintain it? The there we go. Right. You can get in a relationship. But can you maintain? <laughs> can you maintain it? Because mm. when it don't do right, can you still <laughs> stick around? Mm. Or if the car don't want to crank, you gonna give up on you it? Gonna give, right. You gonna throw the one thing? You gonna change right. that battery? Right. <laughs> right. You need to start. You need to start that new, more, new water pump. Right, right. Off YouTube. <laughs> Off YouTube. <laughs> Off YouTube. I'm done. I'm done. Yes. Yes. This yes. is Great Apes Cafe. Any the last questions, y'all? Any more last statements? Testimony, situational situations. I'm good. Just no, I, I've just had no fun. strength and ambition is a DNA in uh, black women that uh, you can't buy. So. All right. And the real superheroes are black women. This I'm, is Great Apes Cafe. Deuces. I love you all. Y'all be safe. No drinking and driving. <laughs> all of that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, What's up, it's your boy Timothy Moore at Great Apes Cafe. I'm out here at Bourbon Street in Wilmington, North Carolina. One of my homeboys about to do a dope-ass performance. I want y'all to like, subscribe, and share. Deuces, peace, and love. Great Apes Cafe.